Okay, my friends, you asked for it and here it is. The number one most important of all fertilizers you can be making for your garden. Now, I'm gonna say a little bit about it, then we'll go outside, I'll show you exactly how to make this stuff, and then we'll come back in and I'll tell you how long you have to wait to use it and how to use it exactly. So, watch the video and make sure, and watch it a number of times if you have to, to make sure that you have a thorough understanding of not only the process, but the principles, because they are really, the philosophy is one and the same. So, <clears throat> what's the best fertilizer that we can give to our plants? Well, to understand this, we must first look to nature, the original organic gardener, the original sustainer of everything. And we see, when we look deeply into the inherent perfection of nature, we will see that here is how the plants operate. Even though nobody fertilizes them, nobody crop rotates in nature, nobody does anything to them, yet year after year, they become more and more fertile. The land becomes more fertile and the trees become stronger and healthier and all plants do if left by themselves. Now, how do they do that? Well, the roots of the plant go down deep into the earth and they mine the exact type of minerals that that plant needs in order to survive. Then, using the power of the sun, it combines the air and the water and the elements to create the exact type of sugars that it needs and that it knows that the community of microorganisms in the soil that it depends upon that they also need. And then it will produce the plant tissue itself. And it says, okay, well, we need to reproduce, of course, for the next years. So how does it do that? One way is that it creates a fruit and this fruit contains a seed. And the seed really is information. The seed is information. It tells, it, it, it is the blueprint on how to construct the factory that is going to combine the elements to create another one of these exact things. It's, it's mind-blowingly perfection. And so it does this by saying, okay, here's the seed. Now we are going to give it everything that it needs in order to thrive already contained within it. And that's what's in the fruit everything that the plant needs to survive. It is the same with all of them. The peach. The peach will grow and it will fall to the ground. Some of it will get carried off by humans or bears or whatever it is and spread that way. But for the most part, most of them will simply decompose. And year after year, season after season, the land becomes exactly custom tailored to the fertility that this plant needs. That's how nature does it. It never crop rotates, it never moves the plants, it never switches this or out, and it never removes a whole bunch of the, uh, of the fruits. Only the human farming does that. And so for that reason, when we have a garden or a farm, we must replenish these exact nutrients that our plants need. So how are we gonna do that? We are going to take the actual plant itself and create fertilizer for that plant in the fashion of the JDOM liquid fertilizer in the barrel with the leaf mold and the water. We ferment it. I'm giving you this video now because it's towards the sunset of the season in the northern hemisphere. So you can use all the plant residue from this uh, season. Now, we can use this in one of two ways. One way is if we are a farmer. And we, or we have a lot of specific crops. If I grow spinach or cabbages or celery or something, you know, lots of them for market or whatever it is, then I'm going to create barrels of only, cel uh, of only spinach or of only cabbage with the leaf mold and the water. And that is going to break down and it's going to provide everything that that crop needs. That's how it works. Now, if you are a home gardener, which is mostly what I'm making this for because a lot of you guys have asked me, okay, Nate, uh, this is cool, all these fertilizers and stuff, but I'm not into that mad scientist kind of stuff. I got buckets all over the place and you know stuff, which is, I love that kind of stuff. But um, if you just want one fertilizer, here's how you do it. Uh, towards the end of the season, right about now, you take all the residues from the plants and you combine them into one barrel. 
you put uh, some of your eggplants, some of your peppers, some of your collard greens, some of your spinach, you put it into the barrel, you add the leaf mold, you fill it up with water, and you uh, put the lid on. And next year, you're going to have perfect fertilizer for all those crops that you have been growing. Now, I'm gonna take you outside and show you exactly what I'm talking about with visual examples so that you can see uh, and then I'm gonna say a few, we'll come back in and I'll give you a few very important tips on how to use it and uh, I will put one of your main concerns to rest. First step is to acquire a container with an airtight lid. It can be either a barrel like this or a five gallon bucket, but whatever container you choose has to have a tight fitting lid to keep it all from evaporating. And then if it's your first time making it, fill the container half full with whatever crops you are growing. Or if like here, you can just top it off because I've already made mine months ago or a couple years ago. And you can just add whatever crops you are growing. It doesn't matter if they got a bit of disease as I'll explain. Uh, this um, eggplant that the cat destroyed, I'm just gonna put it in there with the, cr the roots and everything. We're gonna put in some Swiss chard because we grow lots of that. We're gonna put in some cucumbers that got too big and I can't use them because we grow lots of that. Uh, and then we're just gonna stir it all up and that's going to start to break down and produce the best plant nutrition for the plants that we grow. And this has already been breaking. There is so much produce in here, it's incredible how well everything has broken down these past two years. Now, if it's your first time, you wanna add a shovel full of leaf mold. If, if you're just topping it off like I'm doing here, just a handful or two will work. And I'll very soon have a video on exactly how to acquire this ideal leaf mold. And I'll put a link to that video here. But many of you are saying, Nate, I live in the desert. I have no access to leaf mold. What can I do? Okay, in your circumstance, it is acceptable to use the high quality finished compost that you have made. So here I will go to the very bottom of my compost bin that is in contact with the ground and I'm going to acquire the rich, succulent, beautiful black compost. And it's gonna be nice and dark and it's gonna smell of earth, it's not gonna smell rancid, it just is delicious. And we're gonna add a few handfuls of that to the bucket. Then we're going to give it a good stir so everything's mixed up. Then we're gonna put our tight fitting lid back on because we do not want it to evaporate. And make sure that it's mostly full with water. If you have to top off, you can. And secure the lid and let it work. Okay, I can hear some of you already. Nate, what about the ones with the disease? I don't wanna spread the disease. Well. That's not actually how it works. Contrary to popular belief, uh, all, mostly all diseases already exist in the soil. Powdery mildew is already in the soil. Blight is already in every handful of soil. Corn smut already exists in every handful of soil, practically. They, but they are kept in check by a series of checks and balances through microorganism activity and so only once that balance is thrown off are they allowed to proliferate. The balance is thrown off through either modern industrial you know, or modern agricultural practices or a nutrition defici deficiency in the soil. A number of causes can, can uh, cause a proliferation of the disease. But this is not going to spread it in any way because healthy, good, strong, healthy plants can resist all of this. It's all kept in check by a vibrant plant and the soil food web. So by utilizing these ferments, fermenting it with the leaf mold, and also using the JDOM microbial solution on our, on our land, we are not gonna have to worry about diseases, okay? Uh, so how long do I have to wait to use this stuff? That's a big question I get from you guys. Now, if it's in the blazing sun, it can, in about three weeks, it's ready to use. Uh, so, because everything breaks down real fast. You just skim some off the top and then utilize it. And then once the barrel gets down uh, to about half or the bucket or whatever, then you add more water. Um, but these barrels, and I'll show you how, uh, I'll make videos how to prepare them for the winter time. But I leave them outside and I'm in zone 5B, 6A. They freeze solid for like two months straight. So, but you have to prepare them in a certain way. It's not gonna harm anything, okay? But it gets better with time. So make it now for next season. Because if in the springtime, if you put this stuff on your crops, they are gonna thrive. They are gonna love this stuff, my friends. Okay, so uh, you wanna dilute this and apply it the same way as the other videos that I've showed. I'll put a link to that video here, how I apply this stuff. And you're gonna wanna use it at, start at one to 50. 
you know, and you can adjust it from there. One, one part fertilizer to 50 parts water, you can adjust it from there. All the way up to one to 300 is still effective. All the way to one to 20 if you've got really nutritionally poor soil, okay? But um, just watch that video that I, I linked to and you'll see how I apply it and all of that, okay? So uh, guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, now you got the secret formula. So if you feel like you gained something from the video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment. Doesn't really matter what it is, just first thing that comes to mind. And big shout out to everyone that is using the link in the description to make a donation to the PayPal account or the super thanks button down there in the corner. All of that helps to keep these videos coming with more and more. So thank you, I will see you next time, my friends.